Um, as you would have heard introductory, on Tuesday of this week, the Prime Minister of Australia and the United Kingdom, uh, Anthony Albanese and Sakia Starmer, and the President of the United States, Joseph Biden, put out an extraordinarily rare but joint statement uh, to mark the third anniversary of AUKUS. Uh, and in that particular statement, they suggested that New Zealand, South Korea uh, and Canada, um, all of whom are sort of quite interested in joining too, what's known as Pillar 2, um, although Pillar 2 has never been really defined yet, other than let's look at what it might be, um, at Pillar 2 of AUKUS. According to um, Anthony Albanese, the Labour member of, uh, sorry, the Labour leader of um, Australia, the Labour leader of the UK and the Democrat leader of the United States. So we're not exactly dealing with the centre-right or right-wing administrations here. Um, the leaders of Australia, the United Kingdom, the United States, um, described the third anniversary of AUKUS as, quote, an enhanced security pr partnership that promotes an open and free Indo-Pacific that is secure and stable. We reaffirm our shared commitment to this historic partnership and acknowledge the considerable progress to date. And now our government, which is a centre-right government, which is ironic because most of those folk come from what would normally be described as the centre-left um, in a, some sort of political continuum, um, but our centre-right government has now got to say, OK, are we going to make the jump? And what does that jump look like? Well, that particular investigation, as I said, is happening in South Korea as well. It's happening in Japan and it's happening in Canada. Um, the question is, do we jump? Now, on this show, I think about a couple of weeks ago, I had Don Brash, uh, the former leader of both the National Party and the ACT Party, uh, who had put out with um, Helen Clark, which is ironic coming from Helen Clark, because mm, this is a person that entered New Zealand into both Iraq and to Afghanistan, but there you go. Um, but um, uh, put out a joint statement saying that this is dreadful, that New Zealand should even be contemplating joining ARCUS because... Uh, this will compromise our independent foreign policy. I didn't know we had an independent foreign policy, but there you go. They maintained that we did. I wasn't sure of that. But nevertheless, um, so that investigation by our government is currently underway. I think if you're a betting person, you'd have to say that it's probably likely that this coalition government will enter into Pillar 2, whatever it might look like. Uh, Pillar 2 is described as um, essentially intelligence, reconnaissance, uh, but also technology. And seeing if New Zealand might have any of those things that might possibly uh, apparently lead to an enhanced security partnership that promotes a free and open Indo-Pacific. Essentially, I would suggest to you it's a question of whether or not you join the Western Alliance and whether or not there are some geopolitical advantages, particularly connected to trade from doing so or not. I guess that would be one of the things that occupies the mind of the Prime Minister um, and the Minister of Defence and various members of the Cabinet currently. Joining us to talk about this, though, is a uh, well-known pacifist. He's an academic. I think he works for Otago University, where most pacifists would be. Um, he is the leading thinker chair uh, in peace studies at the National Centre for Peace and Conflict Studies in New Zealand. I don't know what that does. We'll find out in a second. Professor Richard Jackson, and he joins us now. Professor Jackson, welcome to the show. Lovely to have you on. Thank you for having me. Now, um, what, sorry, what is a leading thinker chair in peace studies at the National Centre for Peace and Conflict Studies do? So what, what exactly is that? Well, uh, this was a, a sort of um, initiative to set up um, a set of special chairs that um, had a role in doing leading edge research, but also public engagement. Um, and yeah, just highlighting some of the sort of fantastic work that's going on at the University of Otago. I think there's something like 22 leading thinker chairs here um, that were established in a sort of private and government partnership um, somewhere around 20 years ago. And um, anyway, yeah, so this chair is uh, in place to kind of promote um, kind of peace perspectives and peace research that can contribute to the national um, conversation and debate around issues, yeah, related, related to peace, 
uh, violence, conflict resolution, reconciliation, justice, and so on um, in Aotearoa, but also, yeah, more broadly in the Pacific and the wider world. At the end of the day, you are a pacifist, and I've read a number of your articles and speeches uh, promoting pacifism as an appropriate response in this time and age. Um, and you also lecture in a number of uh, supervised students with projects in um, that and a number of other areas as well. You're also, as you say, a, a researcher, an academic, a professor, uh, a lead thinker at Otago University too. Um, I'm intrigued by the idea though, just before we get on to Alcus, that somebody with such a strong political view um, is, is, is tutoring and, and teaching students at an academic institution that you would think is trying to encourage a lot of different views when yours is clearly quite set. <laughs> well, I mean, that's an interesting way to put it. Um, uh, to say that pacifists have a, have a political view, but non-pacifists don't have a political view. I mean, everyone has political views and all views whether you support the use of violence or you don't, um, that has implications for politics and it comes out of a political place. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to convert anyone. I, I'm personally a pacifist and I came to be a pacifist through research. So to my mind, when you look at the evidence, when you look at the arguments, uh, when you see the facts, um, it, you know, it gives you no reason why you can't why you have to hold on to a, a set of beliefs that supports violence when clearly it, it almost never works and it causes tremendous human suffering and doesn't make the world more secure or safe. You know, you have to follow the evidence. You have to follow the arguments. And, and what I teach is a point of view that kind of gets suppressed in society. Um, you know, there's a lot of myths about about pacifism. There's a lot of um, attempts to denigrate and uh, mock pacifists. Um, and, uh, and you know, it's my role as an academic to, to say, look, we, you know, we're not going to listen to this kind of uh, propaganda view. We're going to look at the actual facts. We're going to look at the actual evidence. We're going to look at the studies. Um, and if you find them convincing, then you should be a pacifist too. Um, but yeah, the whole point of, of, of doing this is to, to have these kinds of serious debates about serious issues without giving into, yeah, simplistic, stereotypical views. Okay, no, 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 and, and that's why you're here. I mean, I'm a great advocate of free speech. Now, I'm not a pacifist, but if I was to study at Otago University and, well, I guess it's at, at the Peace Studies Group and to do my... Um, thesis there or, or do my undergraduate and my postgraduate courses I think you're far more involved in would I be count would it count against me academically that I didn't share your views no that's not how academia works uh, what, what would count against you is if you made bad arguments in your essays but then uh, surely would, that's a subjective analysis isn't it uh, no not at all I mean uh, the whole point of academia is to um, look at arguments and make sure that they're logical, make sure that they're backed up by evidence, make, make sure they're backed up by logical interpretations of that evidence. Uh, there's, you know, there are subjective elements to science for sure, but the methods uh, and the processes and the arguments uh, have got nothing to do with subjectivity. I mean, yeah, you know, there, if, if someone says it's raining... Yeah, but, but I'll give you an thing. example. Just say, for example, I'm doing a course uh, under yourself, Professor Jackson, and um, I say, like, for example, I'm sure you'd... And just, just what we're about to talk about in a second, Arcus uh, is a good example. And I was, well, I was an advocate for New Zealand joining Arcus Pillar 2, for example, uh, as a student right. of yours. And I, I mounted arguments as to why that would be. Are you saying that yep. uh, I would be marked in exactly the same way as somebody who it was more, shall we say, orthodox within your school and said this was a dreadful thing? Uh, absolutely. Look, if you can come up with good arguments as to why we should join AUKUS, you'll get an A. 
But if your arguments are weak, if they're based on unproven assumptions, uh, if they contradict the evidential record that we have, um, they'll be marked down.